we are on Ohanan in the top left hand corner. We have our green Terran player from Team Liquid, undoubtedly their ace. It is Tasia. And his opponent in the lower right hand corner from Slayers, winner of game number one, our red Zerg player, Dark. Yep, and Tasia is asking, um, you know, can you read these Korean characters? And Dark is saying GMA. Yeah, he's uh, Grandmaster American at yeah. reading uh, Korean <laughs> characters. That's, that's what that means. Yeah, so that means he's pretty good, but not great. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually uh, pretty weak. No, I'm joking. Yeah. Um, he's like, he actually can't read Korean at all. So he's yes. Grandmaster <laughs> in America ranking of, uh, of reading Korean. Anyway, I'm just kidding. Obviously, I don't know what they're saying. Uh, if Doer were here, I'm sure he would elaborate yes. and at least sound out the syllables for us. <laughs> That's uh, right. Doa actually had an interview with the SFI World go up uh, over the I weekend that, that, yeah. I, that I watched. So I'm um, glad he's enjoying uh, life back in South Korea. And he's all healed up from his gallbladder. He said if you have to lose any organ, I guess gallbladder is a pretty good one. If yeah, you, you that's know, true. <laughs> if appendix is not an option. so uh, <laughs> If you're forced to lose one, I yeah, suppose. Yeah, then you just say, take my gallbladder. And uh, yeah, so he's He's doing well over there. Obviously, uh, OSL is getting heated up now with some crazy games last night by Rain and uh, last. Last, yeah, yeah. He actually uh, last went up 3-0, and then Rain came back and won four in a row. Yeah, pretty ridiculous. ridiculous to get into the finals, too. So Rain is actually looking to be the first player ever <laughs> to get into the finals of an OSL and GSL at the, at the same, same time. time. <laughs> I mean, he, he could. He would be the first ever uh, to get into the finals. Wait, did MC play yet for OSL? I can't remember. It's a, uh, oh. Uh, MC versus DRG. Uh, either way, either way, uh, if Rain does get to the finals of GSL and OSL, he will be the first player, um, not only at the same time, but ever to be in a StarCraft 2 OSL finals and GSL finals. So, yep. uh, very interesting um, player, Mr. Rain. I haven't actually watched a whole lot of his games, but the ones I have seen were pretty, pretty ridiculously good. Um, there was nothing in there that I thought was uh, like impossibly good, like. At the height of their careers, I've seen other players like MC and like uh, even even some games from San yeah. uh, back when he was in his heyday. Some of his games were just super amazing, and Rain uh, really feels like it's it's fresh because you know he's taking a new look at things like uh, High Templar, keeping them kind of scattered around the map, dropping storms all over the place. It's kind of like uh, baneling landmines, but ambushing with storm instead. So Rain is playing some some interesting methods, but um, I'm really curious if he's going to be able to be stopped by MVP yeah. in uh, Codes. <laughs> I don't know. It should make for a fun set. I'm sure everyone will be tuning into that as well. Um, bit of an interesting strategy from Dark so far. He decided to take his gas really, really late. It uh, appeared as though he was going to go for a four queen build, and he may still do something like it because he saved up a little bit more minerals than normal, but uh, he will start getting that gas at just a bit faster on. Tejan, on the other hand, has, of course, gone for a one-rax gasless fast expand. Normally at this point, he decided to go for two more gas, and it looks like he is going to do just that. Two more gas coming up after that, uh, but a little bit later than I think we're used to seeing maybe a supply or two later. Uh, for Tasia. Either way, both players, uh, you know, expanding like crazy. If Tasia does get that third base uh, up and running, yeah, obviously he's. That's what I was waiting for. Yeah, he's most likely just going to keep that uh, in his base for a while, uh, creating some SCVs and mules before floating it over. Obviously, it is going to be a couple of minutes before he feels safe enough to actually get that dropped over at uh, the, the more likely third, which is the one on the, the top right. Um, he could also drop it into the little armpit expansion because players are usually a little slower to check there. And it is a little bit easier to defend. Um, it's it's actually uh, not impossibly hard to defend for Teja as a Terran player with Medivacs and you know being able to float and get back into his main really quickly. So uh, he's got a couple of options with that uh, with that command center there. It looks like uh, Dark on the other hand is just uh, doing his normal droning queens, overlords, and uh, zergling speed for the time being. How many queens did he actually end up creating? Four altogether. Okay, so even though he got gas earlier than a uh, normal four queen build, he still gets him in place and uh, has everything ready to go. Of course, that does slow down the possibility of a super quick third base, but I would imagine he's going to take one in the uh, relative near future. Circling speed's on the way for him as well. Teja actually already going up to three barracks, though, and a factory. So uh, while he certainly will have the flexibility of being able to move into uh, some sort of Banshee play if he wants to harass, it, it's likely that he's going to invest in upgrades and uh, just go with that for the time being. All right, with uh, with those upgrades, um, he'll be able to do a lot more damage, obviously. Still lots and lots of drones coming out from Dark. He is just not concerned. Oh, there's 12 lings. I was going to say, he's not concerned about even defending things against Tasia at the moment, but uh, with a couple of lings coming out, at least those he can use those as stay alive units. Uh, these three Marines in here could actually do some damage if, uh, if the lings weren't made. So uh, I think that'll be a good response. The Overlord should... 
maybe live? Yeah, it looks like he's going to get out of range. It's actually kind of tricky with that little column because the overload actually flies up and over it. It's, uh, it's kind of hard to see. But either way, the Link's coming in now, going to clear out this tiny little marine threat. Yeah, it was a little bit of indecision there from Tejan. I do just mean split second. He was going after the Overlord. That's where his attack pad was set to. But he saw the drone that was coming over for the third. And for half a second, he ducked back towards the, uh, where the hatchery was going to be. And I thought maybe he would try and deny that. May have actually ended up being a better move for him, as he may have been able to kill the drone and delay this hatchery for about 20 or 30 seconds, because he ends up basically killing nothing. Right. And I mean, it was just a, a little expenditure there, so not a huge deal. But these uh, first four Hellions are lying in wait, just in case those Lings were to show up at his base unannounced. We've got a starport coming up for Teja right now, so I'm expecting Medivacs to come out of there. He could actually go for a quick Raven, which we've seen in TVZ from time to time, uh, just to help him clean out creep tumors and things like that. But uh, with that third command center being done for a while now, he will eventually be able to break down those rocks and get his third situated too. Dark is going to have his hatchery done in just a second. Tasha cleans up the uh, Zelnaga Tower there, but Dark is, uh, of course, being very good about his active Kree tumors already, wanting to make sure to take over the map very early on, and uh, he's doing a pretty successful job of just that. And as we can see, Tasha's going to have a reactor starboard already. He's uh, pretty comfortably on three bases. He's got double upgrades, so he's executing the strategy as we've seen him do quite a bit in the past. Uh, three command centers before building anything but that initial barracks and then going up in uh, mass infrastructure afterwards. So, I mean, Tasia, of course, is the kind of player who likes to get everything in place. He'll defend very minimally at the beginning of the game and then just all out unit production as the uh, game starts to wear on. Yeah, as he gets more medevacs, he'll be able to execute a lot more drops. That's what he likes to do is, uh, you know, split these forces a bit so that the Zerg has to sort of get stretched in different directions. Uh, as uh, the game goes on, Dark will have more targets for Tasia to be able to drop against fourth bases, mains, etc. He can just keep Dark guessing which uh, base he's going to show up at next. But Dark is actually going for the Infestation Pit and Baneling Speed way earlier uh, than he did in the previous game. Baneling Speed was kind of the uh, last thought that he had against Hero. So um, he probably will be using them in his composition a little bit more, especially with plus one, uh, plus one about to finish for his melee and uh, ground armor. But uh, just a bunch of lings at the moment. Infestation Pit, once it gets finished, I'm expecting to see Pathogen play of course, but Teja is on the move already uh, with these Marines and Hellions. And uh, no Raven this time around, just a scan, but he is still going to clean out those Creep Tamers. Yeah, this is a similar uh, push to what we saw uh, Bjorn actually use against uh against Hyun during the Fight Club yesterday, but it's not the same build, of course, for Dark. He's playing a little bit more minimal defense on just Banelings and a few Lings, trying to catch his opponent a bit off guard and then very aggressively teching. Unfortunately, uh, Centrifugal Hooks isn't done yet, so he can't move forward right now with those Banelings or he's going to get them caught out in the open. And, uh, oh, it looks like he's going to try and make it work one way or another. He does land a pretty good hit off to the side. Tasia kind of uh, caught, not quite with his pants down there for a second, but maybe glance it's something else that allowed the links to get into position. His pants were only part way off. They That's weren't right. actually all the way down. Um, so the Lings and Pain Lings did actually connect a little bit, but not uh, as drastically as they could have. Pathogen Glands are going to be done soon, plus two, plus two for Dark on the way as well. So he is going to make that first round of Infestors and just support with Ling Bane Ling for the time being. It'll be a while uh, before that Hive gets finished as it did just start. But uh, Teja, on the other hand, has that full row of upgrades and production facilities uh, being made right now. A fourth command center is being constructed as he does have his third base uh, up and running finally uh, after floating it on over. Vehicle weapon weapons, plus two, plus two for his bio, all this stuff uh, just churning along now for Tasia. Once again, though, Hive Tech and uh, Spire's coming up all at once, and Dark is really aggressively pushing ahead to Tier 3 Tech. Tasia trying to disrupt that, throwing down some scans from time to time. Just picking off a lot of creep tumors. Oh, that was beautiful oh, for oh, Dark, oh, though. Oh, he oh. could not have asked for a better fungal growth. He caught every single one of the units there. And Dark has just, I mean, with the strategy, you want to be able to sit back, play defensively, and just wait for that uh, Tier 3 tech to come online. And he's just bought himself that opportunity. Yeah, well, uh, while uh, he's just, you know, narrowing out the forces of Teja, just killing a few Marines here, a few Marines there, uh, without really losing too much himself, getting these little positive trades is going to help him snowball into that high tech uh, once the hive is done. Teja not sieging up here, just staying in DPS mode actually lifts both of those tanks before they go down, but they are going to actually kill a lot of Marines. No, not actually. A no, that was a pretty... <laughs> Teja actually did a really nice job of target firing out. You see the ring yeah. of uh, dead Zerglings there. 
Target fired out the uh, banlings for a little while and, uh, you know, knew exactly how much damage he can put on at any given point in time. Unfortunately, he does take a big fungal growth, but he's still killing a lot of units. And where Dark had bought himself some time before, he lost a little bit of that now. Uh, with the Greater Spire coming up soon, though, all he has to really do is keep that creep spreading out. Teja is taking time to clear it out every single time uh, it comes back. So. Dark can really just uh, continue hanging on, try to keep his queens alive. He has vision of all this stuff, obviously, as the creep tumors are dying, he knows uh, where he's being attacked. So really, if he just uh, stays on top of his base defense, doesn't allow Teja to get any drops going or anything like that, as long as he keeps a good idea of where his force is, he can actually continue uh, spending and you know saving time uh, for that greater spire to finish. And uh, Teja making the right decision, I think, here to pull back to a more defensive position off to the right-hand side. Still has that command center up and running and uh, should be able to defend it pretty easily. But some of these hurt tanks, he needs to get back, repair them up, and start to move into a, a bit more defensive position until he uh, maxes out and gets this planetary fortress. And I think that's what he's going to do, maybe behind a couple of drops. But he does have a very strong position on the edge of creep. All right. And Planetary Fortress uh, for Teja is already started morphing after uh, those first few lings got some damage in on it. Uh, looks like Teja is loading up for some drops now, so this is going to be where Dark is going to have to play really quickly. He's going to have to be able to respond to these and not die uh, to the uh, Siege Tank push that's coming through the middle. So uh, as the medevac loops around here, uh, it looks like he did actually spot it potentially with a burrowed ling or something at that base, but it looks like he's not going to actually respond to it quickly enough. There's only a couple of drones here for the Marines to even shoot at, but here he comes with a big wave of links to be able to stop these Marines. Looks like he's going to pick up the Queen before he actually goes down. He's got a really nice position right here with uh, Medivacs. He can actually heal up these units for a very long time. He's killed quite a few units. That was actually worth it, killing the Banelings and occupying the forces longer so he could get in position to do just this. He's almost on a maxed army. Nice fungal growth in the middle, but unfortunately, Dark can't follow it up with anything. All right, yeah, he's just going to use the Fungals to stall uh, Teja from being able to push all the way in. A couple of bio units did actually uh, tempt him, and this is something that Beyond was doing also, where uh, he he basically just fans out his forces uh, across a wide area so that um, even if the Lings and Banelings get through the first section of units, there are more siege tanks behind that, more Marines to get through, and eventually the Zerg forces run out. All the Lings die, all the Banelings explode, and the Fungals uh, and uh, Infestors run out of energy. So. Um, Teja is basically just spreading out his forces. He is actually loading up another drop now. He does still have quite a formidable force here on the ground as well. And uh, it looks like he is gearing up to try and get some real damage done now that he's maxed. That's right. Medivac is heading around the left-hand side. Uh, a little surprised that Teja hasn't built a ton of command centers just in reserve. Looks like he's finally got one more coming up now. And Ooh. two more starports. And he needs them because his anti-air is pretty low. And investors are really gunning through the front line of bio forces. And there's not a ton of Marines left over. Are there enough fungal growth to pin these down in place? Uh, no, Ooh. it doesn't look like it. And Teja is going to keep running forward here for the moment and pick up uh, a couple more investors and broodlords. All right, the broodlords actually do possibly manage to escape there, yeah, over the uh, over the doodad in the middle, that weird column of rock, but Whoa. a bunch of wings coming in to reinforce now should actually finish off all these marines, and the broodlords do finish off the tanks that don't get lifted, uh, but three of them did actually get picked up, and it looks like Teja is still attacking with a single marauder at the moment. He will eventually get cleaned up uh, by some wings, but that's, that's kind of interesting how the map pathing there doesn't let the lings just go around the extractor to hit yeah. from the other side. They just like try to funnel in to that one point. One thing that I thought was interesting there was that Teja actually had not great positioning around the Zelnaga Tower. He ran a lot of his units up through the front. That's what led all, uh, pretty much all of his anti-air was there as well. So when the Marines actually got caught off off to the side by all those Zerglings, he had no chance whatsoever of assaulting the Broodlord. So not sure why his units path that way, if it was intentional or not, but uh, in any case, it didn't work out for uh, Teja at all. All right, both players actually getting some some strange losses. Uh, it looks like Teja is going to start switching towards Thors and Vikings now with the Broodlords out on the field. That's a good idea to keep that in check. Uh, obviously, Dark has the option to switch up his build a little bit as well. He's getting 18 Banelings morphed in right now, so uh, he will be um, pretty dominant on the ground if there are a lot of Vikings and uh, uh, Thors on the ground, then the Lings and the Banelings will get a lot of damage in on the ground.
There's only five infestors out there, so there's a chance for these Vikings to rally back and do some significant damage to all the, the air units, especially because, well, they've got decent energy, but they're not exactly full. Um, so with a good engagement, Tasha, I, I do believe, does have the better overall force, but, you know, the problem is, uh, you know, he's, he's not had the best uh, positioning or engagements over the uh, course of this game, so uh, Dark may be able to take advantage of that. Yeah, Dark again being able to defend pretty well against these drops. Actually left a little bit prematurely there with some Marines still standing, but uh, Teja has a really good unit composition. He's got uh, the ability to heal up, obviously. He's got the ability to pick up and leave if uh, the Infestors aren't uh, aren't on top of their game. Pooping creep there, not letting Teja take that fifth base is nice as well as uh, Dark does already have his own. It looks like the banks are starting to build up for both players. Teja actually has about 2,500 minerals and gas to be able to replenish this. He's going to attack into uh, Dark's fifth base right now with everything. Spine crawlers are going to fall very quickly, but it should buy time for the army to get in position, and Dark's just waiting for it. He's going to run up, oh, with a couple of infestors, but he runs directly into a siege tank. And the siege tanks make quick work of that, and Tasha picks off a base down at the bottom right, but here come the Broodlords now. The Vikings are getting in position. The infestors, now minus one, need to provide some big, big defensive fungal gross here. Uh, or Tasha could walk away with that engagement. Yep, Dark lost that base, didn't really actually even thin out the army of Tasia at all. Uh, now he's able to land his fifth base as well, so he is actually going to swing ahead in terms of economy. He's got 3,000 minerals and gas banked up right now, and that max army with uh, pretty much max upgrades as well. Vehicle plus three weapons are going to be done in just a moment, while uh, you can see Dark, his range attacks are just at... Uh, Level one right there? <laughs> uh, yeah, I yeah. believe so. But no, I'm not sure what he's actually researching it for, though, yet. So we'll have to find out uh, if we get best of Terrans, I guess, uh, benefiting from that upgrade. So either way, these Lings can't even finish off a single Marauder because of the Medivacs overhead and the great armor upgrades. Um, even the Marines are, are still just killing everything back at Dark's former fifth base. But Dark, I'm not sure what he's what he's working at here anymore. He needs to actually engage and have a big fight uh, so that he can at least try to remax or something because um, it looks like the outlast strategy is not really going to work too great when you keep losing units every single time Teja drops. Yeah, and uh, Teja, you know, he's maybe going to pick up this queen. No, actually just uh, grabbing the gas from his opponent, which is a very nice gain for him. Uh, is that's what Dark is going to need to replenish those blue lords over and over again does die to a Baneling there, and uh, he successfully defended, but it allows him to move all of his units up onto the high ground here, and that's what he wanted. The Brewlords are coming in from the side. There's actually quite a few Corruptors here as well, so this is going to require a very, very good engagement from Tasha. He's able to start driving away the first line of forces. Uh, of course, Dark tried to move back so he could bait some of those units into Fungal Gross. He does so, but are the Fungal Gross going to be enough? Marines now getting a position as well. The Corruptor count really hasn't been decreased all that much, and Dark has actually positioned his units really, really well, kept them all back at the right time and was able to start taking out this force. Very interesting how Dark is positioning everything. He is actually going to be able to push forward now uh, after taking out a lot of Teja's forces, including those siege tanks. He is going to have to reestablish a couple of bases, but at the moment, Teja doesn't have a ton of fighting forces. He burned through about 2k uh, minerals and 2k gas there to get down to about 3200 remaining in both, so he is actually just remaxing as much as he can. He can only build as many uh, units as he has production structures, though, so Dark actually actually finding a little bit of a window to attack in to this planetary fortress. Yeah, and he has to because he's actually almost out of mining completely because he needs to reestablish his fourth and fifth bases at the moment. The planetary fortress needs to go down in response to all of this. Vikings are getting a position once again, but the Corruptors um, are not really giving up any ground. The Broodlords are eventually going to be able to take out this planetary fortress. It's getting so low, but it's been uh, sitting there almost forever. Yeah, it's not actually going to unless the uh, SCVs go down, and actually the Broodlord numbers uh, have been decreased just a little bit, but now that the SCVs are finally getting targeted, the Planetary Fortress does go down. Uh, he's able to trade that base. Tejo is actually trying to take over Bark Dark's fifth base there, and uh, he's not going to be able to. He's basically saying, hey, can you, can you move? I want, <laughs> I want to mine here. Is that all right? Unfortunately, it's not all right no. by Dark. And uh, the units stim up. They pick off two Broodlords very quickly and relatively cost efficiently as well. Not too many Marines died there, so a good trade from Tasha. But he's going to get swarmed from the back, and I don't know if he has what it takes to hold off these Zerglings. He loses most up at the front. He gets all of his Vikings bungled as well. They're trying to rally back against the Corruptors. A few coming around from the side as well, but the Marines, they just can't get in quick enough. And Tasha is really being driven back at the moment. Yeah, with the medevac count super-duper depleted from what it was earlier. Earlier, these Marines are falling way faster. You have to take a look at 
uh, when you see the supply count, you have to take a look at the actual production at the moment. Uh, about 25 supply or so of Teja is actually still being produced, whereas for Dark, it's only about five to eight supply being produced. His standing army is much bigger right now. And uh, obviously, if you look at the screen, there's not a whole lot fighting back against these uh, Corruptors, Broodlords, and Infestors at the moment. Even Banelings are coming in and uh, those reinforcing wings for Dark. And Teja looks like he could be in massive trouble. Yeah, he could lose his orbital command here. He's still mining under this planetary fortress. With that amount of mules, he is going to stack and have a very high temporary mineral income, but he's going to run out of that base very, very quickly. He can afford to lose these engineering base. They're actually uh, soaking some shots for him pretty effectively while he takes out a couple of units in the air. The corruptors have all gotten low, but unfortunately the, the Vikings can't ju just can't get there in enough numbers quick enough to do the damage they need. With the Marines on the ground, he does manage to start slowly winning that battle back. Nice job by Dark to send out the unhurt corruptor up to the front to try and bait the units back to the investors, but it doesn't work. Tasha's being very patient for now. If we go back to the production tab, Dark is still just uh, producing pure lings as a follow-up for this. The infested Terrans are doing quite a lot of damage, and uh, Tasha is going to start losing production structures here if he cannot get rid of these Broodlords. They are doing the bulk of the damage. Uh, even the Broodling count is very high. The Marines having to shoot them down uh, before they can actually focus on these high-value targets. The Corruptor count is pretty low, but they are still uh, you know, fighting back against these Vikings as they pop out. And even the uh, Infestors, I think all of them are pretty low on energy. None of them are going to have enough for a fungal, but even the Lynx running in, still doing a lot of damage. Teja at only 85 over 97 supply. Dark uh, not really able to re-max no. this army if it gets killed. So this is still kind of a big question mark. This fight has just gone on forever, and eventually Tasha does stabilize, but stabilizes to what? He's only got five Marines left, and he's actually not even going to be able to fight back against that. He needs more units to pop out at the moment, but his income just can't support it. Uh, he's he's mining, well, I mean, these are going to run out here in almost a second. He will eventually be able to float down another command center, and that's exactly what he's doing right now. Um, so hopefully he'll get another temporary boost of minerals and be able to stay in this, but his opponent uh, does have the vastly superior income. He's got this base restarted off to the left. He's got a base restarted off to the right and even if it's just lings and bane lings at the moment that's maybe going to be enough and Tasha really has to get something going yeah basically dark just uh, wants to rebuild oh look at all these mules that just got dropped and there's two lings able to start uh, fighting them down looks like two mules maybe oh no he's actually going to switch over to the hostile units uh, but look this follow-up is going to be a lot of speed links and bane links rolling along uh, he does not want to use all the bane links yet it looks like as uh, he can just send in these lings to kill the majority of the mules so that is a lot of orbital command energy that just got uh, basically nullified by a bunch of lings. Six more infestors coming out now. So Dark is actually going to spend through the last of his remaining gas bank uh, just to get those super valuable infestors back out. Fungals could be the, uh, the thing that changes the tide of the game and just finishes it for Dark. Wow, in already two over 30-minute games to start us off in this set so far. Two very fun, competitive 30-minute games, I might add. Of course, there's uh, only four Corruptors on the map, and it's mostly Infestors at the moment. So while the Vikings aren't dead weight, they're certainly not going to be as cost-efficient as Tasha would like moving forward. He does have a nice temporary boost in mineral income because of the mules, but you're going to see that rapidly decrease here in a second. Was enough for him to start queuing up a few of these barracks, though, and hopefully start to uh, replenish whatever he can. Yep. 10 Marines and a single tank coming out at a time. He's got two medevacs coming out as well, so he will be able to at least heal things up, move them around, get them away from those banelings and lings. The only problem is if uh, all these new infestors drop fungal growths all over the place, that damage is going to be spread out enough uh, to actually stop Tejas' bio units. The fact that this is an orbital and not a planetary fortress means Dark can fight there safely. All the landed Vikings actually get taken out incredibly quickly. That's okay, though. He doesn't really have anything in the air anyway. All these infested Marines and fungals are actually going to be enough to take oh, out these no. Marines by themselves. And a lot of workers just went down in return as well. In fact, Tasha's down to just 12 mining units at the moment. The last tank falls. Tasha is down to 41 supply, and the ace for Team Liquid is eliminated, and Slayer's Dark goes up 2-0 on Team Liquid. Wow, Slayer's Dark already taking out Hero and Tasha. Uh, we already said that Liquid C was not eligible for this match, so... You know, Team Liquid's already going to start reaching. Um, you know, Xenio is obviously an incredible player as well. That's uh, their final remaining Korean player eligible, who was Korean eligible player. for yeah. this. Yeah. Uh, but then, you know, you still got TLO, Sheth, Rhett, and. Uh, 
Is there any other Zergs left? Hey has gone now. jinra has gone. Yeah. I guess that's it. Tielo, Chef, and Rhett. Yeah. And Zeno, of course, who we oh, yeah, already, already mentioned. was a Korean player. But yep. yeah, the, uh, yeah, and it is Lots actually it is actually going to be Zenio coming in. So they've tried a Protoss player. They've tried a Terran player. Now it's time to try a Zerg player. And those have been a couple pretty long games. We are going to run to a commercial break. And when we get back, guys, it's going to be time for game number three.